Hello guys, I'm Herman. Today I'm bringing to you a power supply that I acquired to upgrade the old power supplies in my workshop. Let's unbox it. This is the Raiden RD6018 DC power supply. Which is not very expensive compared to the power supplies of the same category from other manufacturers on the market. The power supply unit has a lot of cool features which we are going to explore in this video. The riding power supply comes in three separate modules and are sold separately. The first module is a digital controller which can supply a maximum of 60 volt 18 amperes DC on its output. The module itself is a buck converter which can vary voltage from 0 to 60 volt and the input voltage must be greater than the maximum output voltage that we desire to obtain. The second module is the DC power supply itself. Before getting this module, we need to keep in mind that its output should be maximum of 120 volt as required by the digital controller. If not, we run the risk of destroying the digital controller. And the last module is the case. This part is preferential. Some people use a 3D printer to print their own. Some use wood and others use acrylic, which is very good. For me, I prefer to buy this metal case, which will make the unit more presentable. Now that we have all these three modules in one place, let's assemble the entire unit. We start with the case, which comes with some electronics for temperature control within the unit. After installing the switch, we install the power connector, we install the fan, we install the fan control electronic board, And then we install the rubber feet for the case. Let's install the power supply into the case. Now we have to wire the power supply terminals to the case. At this point, we have to be careful not to miss the wiring connections. If not, we might destroy some parts. After doing this, we have to connect the fan terminals to the temperature control board. And then we continue the assembly process by putting together the digital controller. This digital controller comes with many cool features and some of these features are optional. For example, you can order the module without the Wi-Fi component. In my case, I ordered with Wi-Fi module to enable me control the power supply with my phone or PC via Wi-Fi. Okay, let's plug in the Wi-Fi module, but before we do that, as you can see on this module, we have to insert the CR1220 CMOS battery to keep the real time clock powered even when the unit is not powered, so as to avoid setting the time every time we power the supply unit. And then now we plug in the Wi Fi module. After all this is properly done, we can now insert the controller module into place within the case. Now we have to connect the power supply to the control module. This process is very straightforward, however we need to make sure to respect the polarities, if not we are going to kill 
the power supply controller. Now, we connect the battery thermistor and then we close the case. Now that we have this unit assembled, let's power it on and explore some of the features that it has to offer. This power supply has a panel full of buttons, connectors, a 2.4 inch OLED display and a rotary encoder. To set voltage on the power supply, we have two options to choose from. It is either we use the rotary knob or we use the keypad. Let's set the voltage on the power supply using the keypad. To do that, we press on the button VSET and we use the numbers to set the voltage we desire to obtain. After the voltage is set, we press on the button on off to activate the output and make it available. The same process is followed when setting the current. To use the rotary encoder when setting the voltage, it is pretty much the same process. The only difference is that instead of using the numbers to set the voltage, we use the knob to rotate to the voltage that we desire. This process to me is very slow and I will never use it. This power supply has the ability to save settings on individual memories and make them available for use when the specific memory is selected. The power supply has 9 memories starting from M1 to M9. Let's save 3.3 volt 1 ampere to M1. Five volt three amperes to M2. Let's switch between memories. We press on shift and then the memory that we want to display and we enter. As you can see, the content of this memory is displayed on the OLED display and we can now press on off to make it available. This feature is very good as it saves us time and helps us prevent expensive mistakes. With this power supply, we have the ability to view the graph of voltage and current, which is kind of an oscilloscope, but at slow frequency. So let's navigate the menu of this power supply. To do that, we click on the button shift. Then we press on the button menu. You see that we have so many options here. 
I don't understand some of them, so I'm just going to go straight to the ones that I understand. The first menu that I understand is the buzzer, which means that we can make our buttons not to be mute, such that whenever we press on the button, it doesn't click, so we can do that. Now you can get when we are pressing and there's no sound coming out. I don't want it that way, I want my sounds to come out, so I'll go back there and set it. I'll go on the logo. To change the logo, we have to use the help of the computer. So we're going to get in that later on in the video. We can change the language. That's Chinese. This is, I think, Spanish. We have many languages. So we, we, we stick to English, okay? So we can change the backlight. See the brightness increase and decreases. So we're going to keep it on two. So we go to the next line, we have some other parameters which I don't also understand. We have, we can change the time, we can change the date, we can change the baud rate, the frequency of communication between the power supply and the computer. We can also change the mode of communication. In our case, we have USB, which is the default mode, so we're going to stick to that. But we have other options. We have the Wi-Fi, we have RS-845. We have TTL and we have Wi-Fi and we stick to USB. So another option is that we can go to let's move out of here. We can go to two types of screens. We have the oscilloscope screen and we have the normal display screen, which is the default. So if you want to display on this one, we just click on enter and then we move there and double click. We have our display with the oscilloscope screen. And another option is we can navigate memories. So we have all the memories that we set. So we can view actually the content of any memory just by clicking here. So we set enter and then we navigate the memories. So that's all for the menu so the other cool thing we can do with this, with this device is that we can control it with the computer to do that we just go to the Ryzen website and download this software and open the application so and then we connect the USB cable to the power supply and then to the PC USB port. After that is connected and the serial port where the USB connector is connected is, is um, indicated, we now click here to say sure. Serial port is updated. So the next thing we do now is to connect. So after connecting now, you see that we have control over this power supply from our computer, from the PC. So I can control, I can set the values. Let's say one 3.3 volt here. Just say 3.3 volt. Then we go to the And then I press enter. I have 3.3 volt on my power supply. Let's say that I want my current to be one ampere. Put the one and then I'll click, I'll click on the button enter. I'll have 3.3 volt, one ampere. And now to, to activate the voltage, what we have to do in this case is to simply come here and click on on and then this button will activate. So now we have this, it's activated. We can disable from the PC. And these are some of the memories, I guess. I don't know much about this software yet, so these, I, I believe these are some of the memories. So with this power supply, we can charge our battery. To demonstrate this, I'm going to use these three cells LiPo battery, so 11.1 volt. And we're going to connect the power supply. Instead of here, we're going to connect it to the battery charging terminal, which is this one and this one. And then, if the polarities of the battery to the power supply is wrongly connected, 
you're going to see the battery here turn red and whenever we activate the output it's going to go off so let's do that so you see that the battery terminal turn red because i reverse the polarities of the battery to the power supply and now when we press on the on the button on it goes off because it cannot charge at this stage so now let's reverse the polarity back now you see that our battery is properly connected you can press and on and you see the battery is charging without a problem so the power supply also comes with this thermistor which is used to sense the temperature of the battery in order to turn off in case something goes wrong. With this power supply we also have the ability to control it using our cell phone but I'm not going to cover this in this video because I don't have the application since I need a router to do that. I thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you like to give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos. I'll see you next time on the next one. Goodbye.